It's the fanatics. And so we have to be open, we have to be, we have to be the Pentecost story about being able to go out and embrace people who are different, all in the name of God, because God loves us all. And when we turn that around and use God as the source of hatred, I don't think it's going to be too good for those three when they meet Allah or God or whatever they want to call them on the other side. I don't think they're going to have all kinds of virgins and, and harps and everything else. I don't think it's going to be good for them. We just want to make sure that our faith can withstand this kind of religious nonsense and instead we can be a true Pentecost people. So please during the Mass keep in mind all of those who died, all of those who were wounded over in London, all of the ones who are, you know, we hear about these kind of things so often, keep them in mind as well. And please help us to find a way around religious fanaticism into the real deep meaning of a God who loves us all. So with all of that said, I do ask you to please, at this time as we gather for Mass, to please make an examination of your conscience.
you live and reign, one God forever and ever. The lesson prescribed by the church for this morning's feast day mass is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost came, it found them gathered in one place. Suddenly, up from the sky, there came a noise like a strong driving wind, which was heard all through the house where they were seated. Tongues of fire appeared, which parted and came to rest on each of them. All were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to express themselves in foreign tongues and make bold proclamations as the Spirit prompted them. Staying in Jerusalem at the time were devout Jews of every nation under heaven. These heard the sound and assembled in a large crowd. They were much confused because each one heard men speaking in his own language. The whole occurrence astonished them. They asked in utter, in utter amazement, are not all of these men who are speaking Galatians? How is it that each of us hears them in his native tongue? We are Parthians, Medes, Elamites. We live in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the regions of Libya around Cyrene. There are even visitors from Rome, all Jews, of those who have come over to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs too. Yet each of us hears them speaking in his own tongue about the marvels God has accomplished. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Therefore wait for me, says the Lord, for then I will change and purify the lips of the people. Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, and from your celestial home shed a ray of light divine. Come, Father of the poor, come, source of all our store, come within our bosom shine. You of comforters the best, you the soul's most welcome guest, sweet refreshment here below. In our labor, rest most sweet, grateful coolness in the heat, solace in the midst of woe. O most blessed light divine, shine within these hearts of ours, and our most innermost being fill. Where you are not, we have not. Nothing good in deed or thought, nothing free from the taint of ill. Heal our wounds, our strength renew, on our dryness pour your dew. Wash the sins of guilt away. Then the stubborn heart and will, melt the frozen, warm the chill. Guide the steps that go astray. On the faithful who adore and confess you evermore, in your sevenfold gifts descend. Give them virtue's sure reward. Give them your salvation, Lord. Give them joys that never end. Amen. Alleluia. 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 I will pour out my spirit upon all humanity. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female slaves in those days, I will pour out my spirit. Alleluia. Alleluia. Cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God, as you cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me so I may worthy proclaim your holy gospel. Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthy proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
sent me, so I send you. And when Jesus had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. And this selection is taken from this morning's Gospel according to St. John. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our YMS Bar is planning a trip on Independence Day weekend down to Hartford to see the Yard Goats play some baseball. And that team actually made the news this past week because of uh, something that happened um, during one of the at-bats. So I guess the pitcher from the opposing team, in his delivery, he tripped or something, and so instead of that ball zooming over home plate, it kind of dribbled on the ground somewhere between home plate and first base. It was just rolling on the ground. But this ball is still within the playing field. The batter is still in the batter's box. The umpire is still watching all this. And as the ball is dribbling on the ground, I mean, the batter's here. The ball is way over there on the ground. The batter is just kind of, as a joke, goes like this. The umpire sees the bat, batter do this, calls him out on his third strike. Even though the ball is on the ground over there, the batter took the swing and he was called out. He didn't think it mattered, but everything matters. And I kind of hear that same message when we talk about Pentecost. I don't know if you heard some of the things that were said in the, uh, the readings already, but all these people are gathered together. And even the last thing we said was that, you know, God, you know, he, he, he sends his spirit down upon the men and the women, even the slaves, the male, the female slaves, your old men will dream dreams and all that kind of stuff. The old, the young, the slaves, the free, the men, the women, everyone receives the spirit. And so it means that it belongs to all of us. God doesn't only look at a few people. He looks at all of us. He hopes to bring us all into his grasp. That's the message of Pentecost. Now, if you get the newsletter and you read it, there's a lot more detail about this, but there's a definite linkage between the Christian Pentecost and also the Jewish Feast of Pentecost. All of those people were in Jerusalem, not because they were waiting for the Spirit. They were there to celebrate the Jewish Feast of Pentecost. That's what brought them together. Now, today's gospel, I should have brought my Bible over here, but it's over there. If you go home, the end of John's gospel is literally... We talked about this yesterday. <laughs> the kid is perfectly quiet. As soon as I start giving my sermon, that kid starts... All right, Ben, all right. So I did try to put him in the pool yesterday and the, and the thing I thought would float and then I saw it was just a swing with two holes in the bottom so the kid would have sunk right to the bottom. So maybe he's getting back at me. But anyway, talking about Pentecost. So the, they're all there for the Jewish feast of Pentecost. And the Jewish Feast of Pentecost is a celebration of the giving of the law on Mount Sinai. Um, I don't know, I can't figure it out, but somehow they say that when the Jews left Egypt, 50 days later, they finally got to Sinai, and that is where uh, God gives Moses the Ten Commandments. And so Pentecost, the Jewish Pentecost, is this feast of the giving of the law. Now, the Christian Pentecost, if you go to John's Gospel, which we said, which we read, if you turn two pages, you hit Acts and start about Pentecost. And that's 50 days after Easter. But John's Gospel says that the Holy Spirit was given by Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, to the apostles on Easter night. And most all of the other Gospels agree with that. The only story in the Bible about the 50th day after Easter in the sharing of the Holy Spirit is that one passage in Acts chapter 2 from, um, from St. Luke. Everybody else says Easter is when the Spirit was, was shared. So that means that the, the dates aren't really important. There's a symbolic significance to waiting that 50 days and saying that the Spirit was shared on Pentecost. Now, when the Bible links the Christian and the Jewish feast, we should really investigate that because they're going out of the way to make a link. The Jewish feast is the foundation of their faith. Uh, it's the, the, the law, those, those, those tablets of stone were put inside the Ark of the Covenant, and then that was the center as the, as the Israelites were moving all throughout the wilderness. That was at the center of their tribes. When they finally settled down, they built a tabernacle. It was at the center of the tabernacle. When they built the magnificent temple, it was at the center of the temple. It was the center of their faith. And so the giving of that law was written in stone. And now all of a sudden, the Christians come along. And in that same city where those stone tablets would have been kept inside that temple, all of a sudden, they're saying that our center is now the spirit. 
the living, breathing voice of God, the living, breathing presence of God amongst us. Now stone, just like that saying, written in stone, that implies permanence. It does not change. Those Ten Commandments that were in the Ark are the same Ten Commandments that we study in Sunday School and Catechism. They are written in stone. They are permanent. But the Spirit, that's relationship. It's a connection with God on the move. Now think about your relationship with anybody. I don't care who they are. They can be friends, they can be family, they can be anybody. Relationships change. Sometimes they get stronger, sometimes they get weaker, sometimes they fundamentally change. Um, you know, sometimes it, it becomes something even more special. And that's what we hope for with Pentecost. Pentecost is a relationship with God, and it's a changing relationship with God. And that comes across through the imagery that the Bible uses. The first imagery that the, shared, the Spirit has shared is the wind. Now, the wind is anything but steady. The wind exemplifies movement. It is not static. It is constantly on the move. When, when wind stops moving, it's not wind anymore. And then you're trying to talk about the presence of God. And so Genesis begins. The very first book of the Bible, the very first verse of that book, says that God hovered over this formless void. And it was a wind that covered the, that formless void. And that wind is the same word for spirit. So the spirit of God hovers over this formless void, and it was a mighty wind. And that's almost the exact same words that you hear with Pentecost. There was a violent rush of wind, it says. And it was so loud that people out in the streets came to gather around the upper room where the apostles were. They wanted to know what that sound of that wind was. So that birth of Pentecost is all about the creation of the church. Just like God created the world with that breath of his, that was the wind on the formless void, so is Pentecost, the birth and the creation of the Christian church. And we don't know where that is going to take us. Professor Stephanie Paulsa, she spoke recently at Harvard Divinity School at their graduation, and she had this to say to all of those young divinity students that were going to head out into the world and try and change the world. And she said that our continuing encounter with God will require us to, quote, to feel our way along the edges of human existence. Think about being blind or in the dark and just feeling your way along the edges of human existence and to wonder with others from many times and many places what might be even beyond those edges, just out of our, our light of sight, our, our light of sight, and what a light that integrates the known and the unknown might look like. To me, that's really exciting, that when God comes into our world, we don't know where he's going to take us. We don't know what's beyond our line of sight. We don't know what's on the other edge. We don't know what's in the darkness. And to trust in God means that we're followers of God. We're not going to tell God in 10 years, this is what we're going to do. In 15 years, we're going to do 20 years. We follow God, and where he takes us, we have to trust that he knows, and we walk behind him. And that, to me, is pretty exciting, and it's definitely challenging. And that's what Pentecost calls upon us to do. It's safe to sit in the center, but sometimes Pentecost calls us to push at the edge, to be, you know, expand the envelope, to see where God wants us to go. And that's the second image that we find in the Bible of Pentecost, the image of fire. The Jewish Pentecost was up on Mount Sinai, and God sent down fire at Mount Sinai to keep the people away. Because if God and the people came into contact, the people died, according to the Old Testament. So fire was to put fear into their souls so that they did not get too close to Mount Sinai, so that they did not see God, and that they did not die. Holy was a frightening thing. Now, fire in the Acts of the Apostles is the exact opposite. The Spirit now drives the followers out of their little huddle in that upper room and go out into the streets of Jerusalem, out of isolation and out into the community, and that's where the Spirit revels. He is out there reveling in the crowd of people, and not only believing people, but people who are called to believe. The shared Spirit allows people of different languages to be understood and to understand each other. And this means that the disciples are sharing the gospel and they are filled with the Spirit, and the ones hearing the Gospel are filled with the Spirit. All of those Parthians and Medes and Elamites and Cretans and all of those other people who have nothing to do with Jesus, the Spirit is shared with them as well. And it can't be that one apostle was speaking in Greek, another was speaking in Hebrew, another was speaking in Latin, because when Peter starts to give his speech, it's only one apostle. 
There's all these different people listening in different languages, and they all understand Peter. And so that's that gift of the universal language. And I don't know if you know the story about it, but in Genesis, the people of the world, according to that, that account, they all spoke the same language, and they were building this magnificent temple to challenge God, and God sends down Babel, different languages. And so the people separate, they go their separate ways. All of a sudden, in Pentecost, that Babel disappears, and people come together and understand one another again. Pentecost is about bringing people together into community. It's about sharing the same spirit of God because we are all made in the image and likeness of God. We all have a little bit of the spirit of God within us. Every person matters. And the spirit of God on Pentecost makes that absolutely clear. That poor batter in the batter's box who took that swing thinking it didn't matter, it did matter. And every single person in the eyes of God the things that we think are silly, the things that we think don't count, in the eyes of God, they do. You know, God was once locked inside an Ark of Covenant with these two huge angel statues guarding it. And then that was inside the Holy of Holies. That was inside a fortress-like temple, all so the people could not get to God. Now all of a sudden on Pentecost, our God forces the church out into the streets, out into all of these different people, people who did not necessarily understand or even like the Christians, and yet they had the spirit just as much as the apostles did. This becomes our new definition of holy. It's not that idea of sameness, like, you know, this is for Allah, driving a white van onto the sidewalk and killing people, or taking on a knife and killing people. That, that's blasphemy. What Christianity says with Pentecost is that we go out into the streets and then we share God with any and with all. And the last thing I'd like to say to you today is the last thing that we read in the Gospel. Jesus says that I share my spirit with you. And then he says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And guess who the you is? It's each and every one of us here. We are the Pentecost people. We're the ones who have to go out into the streets and share God with them. Because God doesn't only like people who go to pretty buildings on Sunday mornings. God loves everybody. And our job on Pentecost is to let them know that. And for this may we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty Lord, as we have mentioned, today we offer our prayers for those who died in London on um, that terrorist attack. We also pray for the wounded, we pray for that city, we also pray for all the families and those who are grieving at this time, and we do ask you, Lord, somehow to bring sanity back into our world. We also ask you, Lord, at this time, we're offering our prayers for Kate uh, Gordon, who is suffering from breast cancer, and also for Richard uh, Slotlin-White, uh, who is the brother-in-law of, of uh, Marianna Foster. Uh, he is battling lung cancer. We also offer our prayers at this time in memory of Nellie Vitoski on the 10th anniversary of her death, which was on June 8th. It was offered by her daughters, Jane Gripko and Anne Zankarsh. We offer our prayers in remembrance of Sophie Kale on the 4th anniversary of her death. It's offered by the Foster and Poe family. Uh, we offer prayers in memory of Rudy Calvo on the 2nd anniversary of his death, June 1st. It's offered by myself, Sharon, Kristen, and Amanda. And we continue to offer prayers for Liz Richmond, battling cancer, raising three young girls on her own, Alex, a 16 year old with lymphoma Hodgkin's disease, and Alicia, a young mother of three with stage four breast cancer, is offered by Cindy Benjamin. We offer prayers for Frank Sprosky, is offered by the Sprosky, Gates, and Kirkendall families. We continue to offer prayers for Bishop Thomas Ganon's health, and also for the strength and well being of his wife, Catherine. We also offer prayers for Richard Poe, is offered by the Poe and Foster families. And also, two-year-old Jack Soleil is offered by Marianna Foster. Are there any other uh, prayers that you would like to offer from the congregation? Well, I have one. Marianna Foster is going in for an operation to have a knee replaced uh, tomorrow. And uh, so she won't be with us for a while. We'll miss her. And uh, we pray that all goes well. 
Uh, I did ask if she would be able to postpone that so she could help clean up the, uh, the tag sale mess. Uh, she said she wasn't willing to do that, but uh, Mr. Cash Marianne, I hope all goes well. We'll wish you while you're gone, and I uh, hope all goes well so you can join us as quickly as possible. For all these intentions, Lord, and plus the private ones that we bring to you in the quietness of our thoughts, we also ask you, Lord, to bless each and every one of us here gathered, uh, to bless those who are perished or are unable to be with us here today, and those who are Pentecost have chosen not to be with us here today. And for these things together, Lord, we pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Lord, thou art the Lord, and Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us, our salvation, he came down to heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became dead. For our sake, he was crucified under the conscious fire. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. This kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send, I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth that proceeds from the Father. He will not speak on his own. He will take from what is mine and give it to you. Hallelujah. from your most sacred hands, most gracious Father, the sacrament of bread, the same faith and trust that the apostles and disciples of your Son are saved.
offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in remembrance of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, in honor of Blessed Mother Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord Amen. Holy Spirit, Comforter, Advocate, sanctify these our gifts. Guide us in your truth and defend us from all evil and enrich us with your grace and your presence. For together with the Father and the Son, you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. teacher and giver the covenant was drawing to a close, he gathered into the upper room all of those who had loved in a singular way and had chosen to continue his work of salvation. He spoke to them words of deep love, longing, and resolve. I will not leave you orphaned. I will come back to you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You are my friends if you do what I command you. 
Do not be distressed or fearful. You will suffer in the world, but take courage. I have overcome the world. If you live in me, and my words stay a part of you, you may ask what you will, and it will be done for you. Anyone who loves me will be true to my word, and my Father will love him, we will come to him, and make our dwelling place with him. I consecrate myself for their sakes now, that they may be consecrated in truth, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you. I pray that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I am living in them, you living in me, that their unity may be made complete. Father, all those you gave me I would have in my company, for I am to see this glory of mine which is your gift to me, because of the love you bore me before the world began. I myself am the bread of life. No one who comes to me shall ever be hungry, no one who believes in me shall ever thirst. After these and other words of the art of priestly prayer and with holy fervor, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, mindful Lord, we your servants and your faithful people, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son and our Lord, as well as his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we receive from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. These gifts we receive with a joyful countenance as from him, who is the giver of all temporal and eternal good gifts, and with an unshakable faith that they will become for our souls the saving remedy. We humbly ask, Almighty God, to command that our offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar, into the presence of your divine majesty. That we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who have passed on to eternity. To these souls, Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, grant everlasting life. And to those who are in life straight in the path of righteousness, unmindful of your Father's love, mercifully short their suffering. We ask us in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope for the greatness of your mercy, some part and fellowship of your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints, who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts are always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine Master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen by whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, and with him, and in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence.
past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, is also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our days. Supported by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same, Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, bring us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching, and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused by judgment. But I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament. Through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this who lives reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Now take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return to the Lord for all the graces that he's given me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Body and the blood of Christ. Body and the blood of Christ. Body and the blood of Christ. 
Christ. The body and the blood of 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 Christ. The Jesus is blood of the God and God's spirit and the body of the Jesus are The body and the blood of Christ.
Let us pray, Holy Spirit, our Comforter, through this Holy Word and through this Holy Eucharist, grant us a new vision and a new counsel, new wisdom and fresh understanding, the revival of our piety and the renewal of our fortitude, so that we may go forth from this place faithful in service and fruitful in deed, established in the knowledge of God and also in the fear of the Lord, that we may see the kingdom of God here upon earth. For together with the Father and the Son, you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. The sacrifice is offered. Alleluia. Alleluia. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have often the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy be it may be effective for myself and all of those for whom I have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was in God's presence. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found light, light for the light of men. The light shines on in darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through Him all may believe, but only to testify to the light, for He Himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every person was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willingness, but by God. And the Word became flesh, and made His dwelling among us, we have seen His glory, the glory of an only Son, coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. 